Okay, so for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, my name is Matt LaPointe from Motu. Uh, what we're going to do is, instead of kind of going feature by feature, the idea is to build a track in Digital Performer, or excuse me, in Performer Lite, and then you get to see the process, the layout. So let's switch over to Performer Lite. So that's rolling. Okay, great. So let's go over. So you can see I've got the interface up. We've got a number of tracks here. And let's play this clip. I'm in the main sequence editor, which is a view where we can see audio tracks, MIDI tracks. And this is just a short two section piece. Let's check it out. So actually I have it set up right now to loop, although certainly we could take it out of loop and just extend it or come up with an ending part. And so that's this little section here where you can, it's called memory cycle. That's where you can set up this loop here, this orange bar at the top. Okay, so you can see this has live bass, which I'll play today, I warmed up a little bit. We've got a piano that comes with workstation. That's the software that comes with Performer Lite. We've got drums, keyboard parts. We have an arpeggiated keyboard part, pads, loop elements. So let's build this from scratch. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is close the project. And you can see this is the main welcome window. When you open up Performer Lite for the first time, you can choose between empty or fixed, you know, templates that we create for you. For your, if you're a songwriter doing vocals, guitar tones, and so on. So, and also we have a Performer Lite demo that will walk you through, you know, stuff that we've recorded for you. So you can see instrument tracks, plugins, how things are recorded. And so over on the right here, it shows you projects that you've created recently, this little desert dream, which is what we just heard a minute ago. And on the far right, you can get to motu.com for news. You can get to information about Performer Lite and, and other products that we make. So let's do empty. And we're just gonna put this on the desktop and we're just gonna call this Performer Lite Webinar. And so this is what an empty project looks like, very empty. So there's nothing really in here. The first thing I want to do is at the very top, you can see this is where we have things like the transport, counter, various shortcuts to edit windows, counters, and things. So I want to make sure I set, you know, the meter, you know, what's the, the count for this particular piece of music. I want it to be in 4-4 four, four time. So we'll go ahead and set that to 4-4. Four, four. Uh, tempo, I want it to be, it's a little fast at 120. So let's just type in here 115. And I want to listen to at 115. I think that's the tempo of that piece. Let's turn on the metronome, which is right here next to the count off. We can turn on the metronome. If I double click on the metronome, I can set what the sound is for the metronome. So here's a normal click or an accented. The accent happens on the downbeat. So it's one, two, three, four, one. So that's fine, that works. And so that's what 115 beats per minute sounds like. Two, three, four, fine, that sounds good. So we've got our tempo, we're in four, four time. I've got the metronome turned on. Uh, we'll get to the count off at some point. If you don't want it to be two bars, because maybe at that tempo, two bars might be waiting too long. So let's just make it a one bar or four beat count off. So let's do that. Double click on the count off and let's set it to one bar or one measure. So now we've changed it, we can hit save. And so we're gonna to rewind to the beginning. So let's add an instrument. First thing I wanna do is add a piano part. I think that'll be a good foundation to build the other instruments. Since it's very rhythmic and tonal, let's start with the piano. So what we're gonna do under project is we're gonna add an instruments with options. I can add individual tracks, MIDI tracks and mono, tra mono audio tracks or stereo audio tracks, but I wanna add instruments with options. So I'm gonna add one and we're going to assign this to 
whatever virtual instruments are installed on your computer. So if you're on a Mac or PC, you install VSTs, audio unit plugins from other manufacturers. Those will show up in Performer Lite. So here are the list of ones that are provided from Motu. Different virtual instruments like bass line, synthesizers. These are some actually add-on third-party ones that we develop that don't come with Performer Lite. But we do provide one good one here. It's in a different category called UVI Workstation Stereo. So all of you should own and have Workstation, which comes with Performer Lite, and it comes with a sound library. So let's go to Workstation. And so how many MIDI tracks do I want? One instance of Workstation can have multiple channels, multiple parts. So you don't just have to have one. You could have up to 16 instruments inside one Workstation. That way you can manage things a little bit more easily. Instead of having to run lots of virtual instruments, you can just run one or two. So let's add, in this case, how about four MIDI tracks. So we hit OK. And here comes Workstation. So what I'm going to do is go over to the, at the top to Multi. If I click on Multi, it's going to show me here four MIDI channels. Now I can add more, or I can just subtract channels. I can have 16 in one instance. So I'm going to double click where it says empty. It's going to take me into the browser. So I have lots of different sounds installed that work with this particular program. But the one that comes with Performer Lite, if we scroll down here, it's called Motu Instruments. And you can see there's 10 different banks inside the Motu Instruments. Things like loops and pianos and basses, strings, pads, percussion instruments. And feel free to use as many as you want. They're totally uh, legal. You can use, use them in any production you want to come up with. So let's start with piano, acoustic piano. We'll do a concert grand. I'm going to double click on it. So once you navigate to it, double click. We can hit, there it is. And here's the volume, and so on and so forth. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll also notice in the piano, this shows me effects down below. So it looks like I've got a nice reverb on there, an impulse response reverb, which is a very high quality reverb running on the piano. So I've got the MIDI track already created because when I added the instrument, it created a MIDI track for me. So this is MIDI channel one, this is channel two, channel three, channel four. Nothing's loaded in two, three, and four, but they're ready to go once I add those sounds. So channel one, I'm going to option click and I'm going to name this piano. Now what color is the track? If I click on the note, we can make it a green color. So let's test it. Okay, it sounds good. I can hear it. Let's, oh, the reverb's bypassed. Let's unbypass the reverb so I can hear it. Yeah. All right, so let's try to lay down a part. Remember, it's just two sections, so it's not long. It's just going to be a short little piece to give you an idea of how to build and use Performer Lite. So we're going to close the window. I've got my count off now turned on. We're wound to the beginning. We're at the top. So I'm going to have four clicks. It's going to give me one bar of count off. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to record. And then I'm going to lay down something. Let's see if I can do it here. So I think I'm going to do this little ditty goes All right, I think I can try to do this here. Okay. 2 3 4 Oh, see I'm already off to a bad start. 1 2 3 4 save. And so I feel pretty good about that. Not perfect, but we can certainly work with that. And the great thing about Performer Lite is I've got different tools in here to kind of clean up my performance, make it more accurate. So you can see it's whatever, 23 bars. So if I hit one on my numeric keypad, you know, we all have our computer keyboards. Well, if you have a numeric keypad, the one will take us back to the beginning. And so what we're going to do, we can take it out of record. And if I double click on this part, it brings up the clip editor down below. And so you can see all the notes that I played. So the first thing I'm going to do 
is simply use quantize, which basically takes my performance to the closest, you know, syncopated increment. So if I play one and two and da da do, that's what basically I played eighth notes, one and two and, and so if I highlight everything by hitting select all, command A, I can go up to region and we're going to quantize. And so let's quantize these notes to eighth notes. And I hit apply. And so let's just hear a few bars of it. We'll take off the counter off. Yeah, it's fine. So it's, it's gonna be accurate enough. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna even out the notes that I played in terms of volume. In MIDI speak, that means velocity. I wanna change the velocity. When you play very loud, that's a velocity of 127. And of course, you can go all the way down to zero depending on how loud you play. And so sometimes, uh, when you play loud velocities, it triggers different samples. When you sample an instrument, each velocity has its own sort of sample that it's playing. So if you want it to be a little warmer, you might lower the velocity a little bit. So let's do that too. I'm going to select all, region, change velocity, and I don't want to set it to one value. I just want to limit it to a range of values. So let's see, from 65 to 95. So now it's all in this sort of sweet spot. It's not too loud, not too soft, it's saved. Okay, so we've got our piano part, and it looks like also when I finish here, I really wanna wrap up at bar 23, so at, at the beginning of 23, so I can just delete that section. So it's all nice and clean. So now what's up next? Drums, drums are next, because I wanna use the drums as a foundation before I add a live bass part. So drums should be fun to do. So let's do that, let's add another instrument. And let's go up to project. Add instruments with options. And we're going to add one of the Motu instruments called Model 12. Now Model 12, we don't need four MIDI channels. We need one MIDI channel for Model 12. And this is cool. This is basically like a drum module. It has lots of kits. And each of these little cells down below represents a different element of the kit. Kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, toms, cymbals, crashes, that kind of thing. So we also provide you with lots of presets, things like kits, rhythm kits, electronic kits, percussion kits. And so and the other cool thing about this instrument is you can drag and drop your own samples. So for instance, let's say on the desktop you have this great kick drum sound or clap sound. You can literally drag it onto this little cell and import it. But we're not gonna worry about that today. We're gonna go down to the LA Trailer Production which is a cool library of like sound effects and things. So I don't want to do a traditional kit. I want to do something that's sound effecty. You could hear from the demo that I played for you. It sounded kind of, I don't know, kind of explosive sounding. So let's see what it sounds like. I know right off the bat that I want to turn it down. So we're going to close the instrument. Now check this out. On the left side of the window, we do have what's called a channel strip. Very handy because if I click on the MIDI track that, that's assigned to model 12, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and option click and name this. I'll just call it kicked. And let's see, he's gonna be a nice blue color. That works for me. Perfect, save. Let's pull it down and level. That's the drum kit, let's play it. See how it's got kind of a, almost sounds like a. Okay, so this is gonna be just a real simple part. I'm only gonna play a few bars of it because I just want it to repeat. I want it to become almost kind of methodical and kind of sort of dreamlike, repetitive sort of nature of it. Okay, so let's do this together here. I'm gonna turn on the count off, one bar. The metronome's turned on. So I'm at the beginning, if I hit record, I'll be able to lay down a part. One, two, three, four. Cool, so a little variation there to keep it interesting. Okay, so not bad. I think we can tighten it up a little bit. I think I also want to even out the notes. So let's double click on it, brings up the editor. And I only played two notes, basically kind of a bass drum and sort of shows me the note here. That's E and that's of course C. And that's the usual mapping for instruments for drums is C as the kick drum and so on. So I can select all and let's go up to quantize and Quantize is going to let me, I'll put these just right on, well, I guess I did play uh, at the end there, da, da. So we'll go ahead and, and I'll go ahead and quantize the releases as well, meaning the length of the notes will be eighth notes. So let's apply it. 
there they are. They're all nice eighth notes. And so let's also change the velocity. We talked about changing the velocity. And now I'm going to set these to one specific value, something like 80. So let's see how it sounds, and let's get a better blend of the mix. So let's do it. We'll take off the counter, or at least the count off for now. That's OK. Did I hear the first note? Yeah. Take off the click so we can kind of hear it. Yeah. Bah, bah. Okay, so I need to repeat this. Okay, well, what's great is that since it's already a clip, it's super easy to change the duration of it. Now, watch what I do here. I'm going to move the wiper out of the way. When I position at the top here, of this blue area, which is the clip, you see I get this little loop tool. Well, it's easy for me to drag this out. In fact, I want to drag it all the way to the end here of bar 21, and I'm going to hit Save. That's it. So simple in Performer Lite to take the clip and just extend it. Just repeat it as many bars as you want. So that was easy. So next up, I think bass. Bass guitar ought to be a cool thing to add. So let's do that. So this is the first time we've recorded here with an audio track. These are all virtual instruments, right? Inside the computer, I'm using MIDI tracks. Now, how did I play those virtual instruments? Well, I have this Roland piano that's set up that connects to my computer through USB. So in your studio, you know, I assume that you'd have some kind of a controller, MIDI keyboard, that either plugs into MIDI, an interface, or plugs into USB on your computer. And it has, might have an octave, two octaves, a full keyboard range. You may have a drum set that's MIDI. Anything that's MIDI can be sent in and trigger those sounds. So it doesn't have to be uh, anything fancy. It can just be something very simple, or it can even be a drum pad to program your parts. So that's very simple, and that's something you just have to install on your computer. Just make sure that, in some cases, it's just a question of plugging it in and it works. Or you may have to install a driver, depending on which operating system you're running. But it's very easy. So this is all MIDI-related stuff. Now we're actually going to record digital audio. So let's do that. So when it comes to digital audio, you know, we recommend you have an audio interface. You know, typically, if you own a Motu M2, M4, or another Motu audio interface, I'm using the Motu 1248, or you might be using a Samsung microphone. Anything can be used as a way to get audio into the computer as long as you know, the, the computer recognizes it. So let's just talk for a quick second about setting up the audio interface just for a minute. Now, with a lot of great documentation on Performer Lite in terms of setup, setting up your MIDI, setting up the audio, and that's on Motu's website. So let's go to Setup, and we're going to go down to Audio System, Hardware Driver. We're going to configure the hardware driver. So in this list, this shows me my computer has lots of different choices for audio inputs or audio drivers. But I'm going to use the, the Motu 1248. And you might use the M2, the M4, or other Motu interface that you own. And so once you set that up, then you pick the sampling rate. That's the quality of the recording. So 48 kilohertz is very good, 48,000. That's the film and TV standard. And you can see I've got my buffer set nice and low. So when I'm playing instruments, it doesn't. there's no latency. Buffer is basically the time it takes for the sound to, when you play it, to come out of the computer so you can hear it. And it's, it seems like it's kind of spongy and it sounds late because the buffer size might be a little too high. So you want to lower that buffer a little bit so you're playing it, you don't feel latency, which is the time delay. So be aware of that. But the other thing is, is if it's set really low and you're running a lot of instruments, the computer might say, hey, I'm running out of processing room. So typically I like to tell people, as you're tracking and working on parts, keep the buffer nice and low. And when it's time to mix the project and you're not really tracking anymore, but you're starting to add effects, you're starting to add automation, now you can maybe raise this buffer, especially if the computer's complaining a little bit. But we'll just leave it here. My computer is basically a laptop. It's a fast MacBook Pro, and it does a good job. And it's nice, by the way, to have multiple cores, lots of RAM, and solid state hard drives are good components to have for doing digital recordings. So we're going to hit OK, and it's going to register the clock. So now let's go up to the top. We're going to hit Save. Make sure everything's fully loaded. Whenever you switch the, you know, in the audio interface, it kind of reloads the session. So we're going to go up to Project, and we're going to add a mono audio track. So a live bass is obviously an instrument that is just mono. It's not stereo. So you might use a stereo track if you've got two microphones on a piano, or let's say you're miking, uh, you know, 
choir or something where you have multiple people singing and you have two microphones in a room. But generally a voice is mono, you know, a guitar is mono. It depends on how you want to mic it, but typically bass, guitar, and, and vocals are mono. Cool, so there it is. There's the mono track. Let's actually move it to the top. And let's name it bass. And let's give it a nice track color, something like an orange. Now, let's stretch this out a little bit. See, each track can be resized here in this window. I can make it very large. So what I want to concern myself with is, what's the input for this track? In other words, how is the bass going to actually get onto the track? What am I going to choose? So let's choose here. It says I for input. So I'm going to choose, I have an input on my interface called Live Bass. So some interfaces let you name the actual channels in the hardware. So your, yours may not. It might just say analog one, analog two. That's okay. You can just pick the input and then we're going to put it into record. So now if I actually grab my bass. All right. So now here's the cool thing. If I wanted to add, put an effect on there, I could hear the effect while I'm recording it. And that might be nice actually to add maybe a little bit of compression, maybe a little bit of EQ. Maybe you're a singer or guitar player and you want a little reverb or something to kind of inspire the performance. Well, you can do that very, very easily. In fact, we could do it from the channel strip. Why don't we just go to the mixer this time at the top. Let's go to these faders. Here's my bass guitar part. At the very top, we have what's called a preset. Now, these are also slots that we can use for effects and we're going to get into that. We give you lots of effects, things like you know, distortion boxes, reverbs, EQs, limiters, that kind of thing. But I've actually saved at the very top a preset, and it's just called ML Base One. Now look at look at what it's made up of: a tuner, which is pretty handy. Oh, so it looks like I'm at least decently in tune. It's fine; it'll be okay. But it's nice that we actually provide you with a tuner, so you can tune up your instrument. Tune up your vocals. Just kidding. Um, and that way you're ready to go. You can just run a tuner out on your uh, insert here. And I also have what's cool is a, basically a preamplifier, a custom 59. It's like a head here, guitar head. Gives it a little bit of eh, a little bit of drive for the bass. And I also have this cool plug in here called Live Room B, which is basically modeling a, a bass cabinet in a room with different microphones. So there are some cool effects that come with Performer Light, just simulating like, hey, I want to change up the cabinet, so I want it to be a, you know, a 12-inch cabinet. I want it to be a 410 cabinet. So you've got lots of different things you can set up here. I also put a little bit of chorus on the bass. Kind of gives a little bit of width, makes it sound a little warmer. So I think we're good. The level's nice and hot. I can turn it down even just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to lay down a part, hopefully you're not make any mistakes, but we can do this. Let's go back to the main window and let's rewind to the beginning. And so I do want the count off and I do want the metronome. And let's see, I'm going to be playing C. I think I'm a little loud. So let me turn myself down just a hair here. And that's one thing about the channel strip that's handy is pulling this back. Yeah, I don't really need to hear myself too loud. So let's try it. When I turn this on, remember this is the record button at the top. I can also use the number three on the keyboard. So we talked about one is rewind at the beginning. Well, three is record. Or you can simply just put it in record. Ready to go. One, two, three. fine generally could be maybe a little bit more perfect but for the uh, demo I think it's gonna work fine and so I did notice when I first went into what I call the bridge I played quietly so let's actually that'll be a good example to clean up and fix so there it is there's our digital audio waveform and we can make this track even bigger if we want to come in here and we're gonna do some editing to it so we'll take it out of record we're gonna to rewind to the beginning we're gonna hit save I'll take off my bass 
and we'll edit that little part. So that, let's see, where was that section? I think that's bar nine. I played a very weak C, C natural there. Did not eat my Wheaties today, so let's fix that note. Uh, let's, let's listen to what we have, and I think we'll be able to fix that note very, very easily. We can take off the counter and the click. play that same figure I, you know it starts on that C major chord and then it goes to the C sharp minor major 7 and basically I know I'm going to repeat that at bar 15 so let's do something here let's actually move this wiper here let's let's just highlight I'm holding control I'm going to highlight this whole these first three beats of this measure See how we're on the grid at the top the grid is set to quarter notes so when I'm highlighting something you can see that it's snapping to the grids. Since we're playing to the click, I want to think about my grid. I want to highlight bar 15, the first three quarter notes. I'm going to hit copy, and we're going to go back to bar 9, and I'm going to highlight the first three, and I'm going to hit paste, which is command V on the computer. So I've just put those notes in there. So let's check it out. Let's back up to bar, I'm going to type in here bar 7, hit return, hit play. That's the one that I put the little slap on, which is kind of fun. Um, maybe we don't keep the slap. Why don't we actually pull this region back, and we'll let that slap live just on the second time. So that'll be kind of interesting here. Let's pull this back. I'm basically just changing. I'm using the edge tool to edge back. And let's see what that sounds like. Yeah. So I want to put a little crossfade. Watch how I do this. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And let's double click. Uh, let's see. Yeah, do you see if I click between the two seams, I get this little crosshair tool. See, and if I drag, I can put a little crossfade between each of these sound bites. That way, if there's a little, little noise, I can clean that up. Let's see if it's clean this time. Perfect. That's exactly right. So it sounds like I played it that way. We just took that first downbeat note from later on, and I'd be able, I copied it. And I pasted it in there, and now I'm using a little bit of both edge editing, which you can see you can edge edit with this little tool where you can drag the sound bite either way. And then you can also use what's called the crossfade here between the two sound bites. So that's, that works. That, that sounds good. So let's go to the end here and make sure that when I get out here, let's just clean up the end. I'm going to hit delete. I can put a little tiny crossfade here too so that the bass fades out perfectly as it lands on the next beat. So good, so now we've got a few elements. We've got piano, of course drums and bass. Uh, next up, there's a keyboard part that's sort of doing this counter melody, and it's a cool sound. So let's, let's try that. Let's, get a little, let's do a little bit of file organization here. We kind of have a lot of tracks in view. I want to clean this up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, you see up above, this is showing me my tracks that are in view here. So I don't want to see the conductor. It's okay, we don't need to look at that right now. Conductor would be if I wanted to actually put in things like tempo changes, meter changes. If let's say at a certain bar you wanted to change to 3-4 time or you wanted to change the tempo at a certain bar, you can do that. But right now we're just staying at 115. But what I do want to do is take the virtual instruments out. You can see they have a different look to them. I'm going to hide the instruments, hide the conductor track, and now I'm going to resize these tracks holding the option key. When I option resize one track, all the tracks follow. So now they're all nice nicely even in terms of size. I can just kind of look at the whole piece of music. So now we're going to add, let's just maybe make these a little bit smaller because we're going to add another instrument. This will be again like a keyboard part. So let's see how we're doing here. We're going to go up to project, instrument, add. We're going to add instruments with options. We're going to add one of the Motu. It's called Proton, which is an FM synth. FM synths were really big back in the early 80s, but there's a lot of great sonic possibilities with FM synths. So, of course, 80s has some really great sounds. So here we are with Proton. We're going to add a MIDI track. 
And here we go. Let's pick a sound. So I happen to know, remember, every virtual instrument that we provide from Motu has presets. So just when you open up the instrument, go up to the top, and you'll, where it says None, click, and you'll get to check out lots of different presets that you can play from your keyboard. So I know I like this one here under Keys. Let's see, Pads. Under Pads, this is called Tears, which has a very warm quality to it. Let's check it out. Okay, so that sounds good. I'm going to lay this down, lay down a new part. Here it is, and I'm going to label this track. Have I labeled all my tracks? Bass, piano, kit. This will be called, we'll call this keys. And let's pick a different color for this. This will be kind of a purplish color. And now we'll, let's hide Proton. So I just want my, my tracks that have you know, music data to be in this main window. The virtual instruments I don't really need to look at right now. Okay, and we're going to turn the volume down just a hair. And let's see if that's loud. Yeah, so you'll see that this kind of just complements the piano. It's sort of another harmonic, rhythmic layer to this piece of music. So it's time to turn on the count off, turn on the metronome. We're back at bar one. We're going to hit record. This time I'll use the number three from the keyboard to actually put it in record. So let's try it. little mistakes in there that time but not big ones but that'll be good that we'll actually edit those because I don't think we've corrected really many notes in terms of MIDI we've, we did some timing things with the bass we fixed a couple notes all in all I like the performance but I think we can make it even better so let's rewind to the beginning we're gonna hit one on our numeric keypad on the computer takes me back we're gonna double click on the keys part let's really get a good look at it this time let's make it really big so we can see the notes here. And so as I play this, and let's go ahead and quantize it right off the bat just to kind of even it out. You know, you, you see me quantizing it a lot. You know, typically when I'm recording a song, I may not quantize things. You want things to have a very human feel. But for these examples, this is kind of an electronic track. And usually with electronic music, you want it to be very on the grid. So that's why I'm being meticulous about quantizing things. So let's go up to region and quantize this. And again, one and two. Um, Ba -da, da 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 apply. And let's see where I made my mistakes. Let's just watch it real quick and we'll just fix them on the fly. So you'll see it go by these notes. Turn it down a little bit. Da da da. So I think that's what I want there. Let's hear it. Yeah. section The rest of the notes, I, there was a couple that I was like, well, and they're not necessarily wrong notes. It's just that there were, I thought maybe I had a better pattern in mind. What's great, by the way, is if, let's say I did that performance and it was like, you know what, that's, that's kind of a keeper, but it would be nice to get another take. I don't want to delete that one. So how would I do that? So let's talk about that. It's, if I go to the track here and I resize the view, you can see where it shows me the clip, which is what we're looking at. You can see I can set my input. I can change my assignment to my virtual instrument. But if I make this track slightly larger, now I could do things like insert volume. We can talk about automation. But what I'm really concerned about is takes. You see, if I go to new take, I could keep the old take and switch back to it. Or what I might do is, if I go to take two and I delete that take, 
Sometimes what's nice to do is just duplicate the take. So now I have that part, but I can change it all. And I have the original there as a backup. So it's cool that you can have many, as many takes as you want. You could have hundreds of takes. And so it's no problem doing that. So we can just leave that take. We'll go back to take one. And now let's see, where were we? So we've got the keyboard part. We've got the kit, the bass. Um, oh, I, I think I'm going to change the velocities of this. I want this to be very rigid in terms of its volume. I don't want to almost sound like mechanical. So we're, we talked about that. If I double click and I select all, command A, select all, and we're going to go up to region. We're going to change the velocity. We're going to set these all to 99, nice and loud. And let's just make sure the balance is good. Turn the volume down. I think I want the piano to be just slightly louder, so I'm going to focus on the piano. Yeah. Oh, there's a mistake in the pad here. I'm glad we found that. Okay, good. Well, that's I'm glad that we captured that little, fixed that little mistake. Okay, so next up, you'll remember from the recording I played initially, there was this interesting arpeggiated sound. And I love adding arpeggiated synths. And it's really easy and cool to use these inside performer lights. So let's set that up together. Uh, I just realized that we added, remember when we added um, the piano part and we added extra MIDI channels? Well, it turns out I don't actually need those channels. So I think I'd like to actually, you know, get rid of these tracks. So let's do that. If I highlight the name of this track under Project, we can simply delete the track. And let's do that. Let's delete the tracks. And that way we're all cleaned up here. We're good to go. So next up, I think, let's see, we were t I wanted to add that arpeggiated instrument. So yet again, we're going to rewind the beginning. We're going to add, I think this is the, let's maybe one or two more instruments, and then what we'll do is we'll add some drum loops and we'll make our mix. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to go up to Project. We're going to add Instrument with Options, and we're going to add from Motu's instrument here called Nano Sampler. Nano Sampler is a neat instrument that we give you that's a drag and drop sampler. So you can drag your own files and it maps them across the keyboard so you can play them. Let's say a vocal, a sound effect. An explosion. It could be anything, really, but we give you presets. So there's a preset that I've saved in here called Not So Cordial. Check out what it sounds like. It's just a cool sounding synthesizer. But I want to actually give it some life. I want to add some effects to it. Seems like it's a little flat. So how do we do that? Let's go at the top. Here we've been using the transport. We can see the counter. We've been talking about, of course, these channel strips and the view here of the track selector. And we're going, of course, over to the mixing board. So here's the MIDI track for that arpeggiator. Okay. Oops. Nice and loud. Let me turn that down. Now you'll notice that this is Nano Sampler. There's the instrument. If I need to bring it back up, I just double click on it. Now I can put an effect. I've got these slots. Those slots are available for effects. And I can put that after Nano Sampler. So why don't we try a reverb? That would be kind of cool, I think. So I'm going to right click on this slot, or that's called an effects insert slot. And I'm going to go down to Motu's Proverb. There's Proverb which is a very high quality reverb that we give you that comes with lots of great presets. So when you open up the window, you'll see kind of right in the middle, there's a down arrow and we have factory presets, things like European halls. Basically, this is an impulse response reverb, meaning that they've actually set up and they've taken acoustical fi fingerprint of an actual physical space. And they can do that with speakers and test equipment and actually sample rooms. And so it's amazing now. You can get very accurate sounding cathedrals and concert halls. So let's see for this. Yeah, we can do a concert hall. Do you see how it's fully wet? That's probably too much reverb. Let's actually do something like, how about we do a European cathedral? That'll be interesting. From the back pew. And we'll make it a little less wet here. It's really long. So let's do this. This is the length of the reverb. So let's make it shorter. Yeah, I think it's going to be fine. In the mix, it's not going to sound as wet because everything's going on. So, But I do think it's still quite loud. So let's turn it down. 
Now, you'll notice when I'm playing this that, you know, it's, it's only playing the notes that I'm playing, but what if I wanted to create an arpeggiated sound to it? So let's do that. I'm going to go up, this is the MIDI track, and we can option click and name this. I'm gonna call this ARP, as in like arpe arpeggio. There's ARP. So I'm gonna add a MIDI effect. So let's add a MIDI arpeggiator. So what are we gonna do here? Da, 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 da. And let's just see here. Do we wanna have 16th notes? Let's do 16th notes. And now let's pick our pattern. Let's go something like up and down. Well, what's that gonna sound like? Well, what's cool is that we can just audition it. Once we add this MIDI plugin and we set up the parameter, we can play it and listen to it. So what does it sound like? That's actually going to be interesting. Now, what's cool is that once I record this, I don't have to commit to it. I can always change it after the fact. So it's not super important. As long as I feel like it's doing what I want it to do generally, I'm able to change it after the fact. So here's what I want to do. We'll go back to the main sequence view. Now, you can see here at bar 9, that's where we start that other section, what I call sort of a, a bridge section. That's where I want to put the ARP. So not at the beginning. So I'm going to wait and count myself in so why don't I start myself at bar seven? And I don't need the click and I don't need the count off. I'm just gonna start at bar seven and I'm gonna hit record. And when bar nine comes, I'm gonna play this arpeggiated part and I'm gonna record it. So hopefully I'll do a good job here. Let's try it out. I felt good about that. I felt like I played the right notes. Um, velocities were a little all over the place, but all in all, I think it's definitely a performance. Now, with an arpeggiator, we definitely want it to be quantized because we don't want to make any mistakes when it's doing those cool rhythmic moves. We want it to be very accurate. So we all know now how to easily quantize it, but let's do it together. I'm gonna clean up the beginning. We can just trim this back and let's quantize it. How do we do that again? We double click on it, we open it up. We can select all. The other thing I want to do in this is let's, and you can see there's a couple little mistakes here. Let's clean up those mistakes. Visually, when you start looking at something, you'll be able to look at little tiny mistakes. But what we're going to do is select all, and we're going to go up to region. We're going to quantize these. Now, I'm going to quantize them to half notes because I'm not playing anything fast at all. Everything's very slow, okay? So let's watch what happens when I quantize this to half notes. Everything grows in nicely in length. In fact, maybe I'll even extend this length. I'll extend this length. And these can be extended. Everything can be extended. I don't think I was actually using much in the way of hold pedal. I was just, you could certainly record the sustain pedal from your piano or keyboard. In this case, I wasn't, I was just basically doing it, you know, 10 finger try here. So let's see, what do we got? I think the rest of this is very clean looking. That should sound good. And I also want to make it even in terms of velocity. So they all play and it sounds very accurate. So I'm going to reselect all, Command A, region. We're going to change the velocity and we're going to make them all something a little bit warmer, like 70. It's kind of a middle point. Now let's check the level. And remember, we, I came in at bar nine. So let's just put in bar eight. Eight, hit return. So if I hit play, we should be in good shape. We'll be right where it's going to start in the next, basically the next beat. Yeah. So now remember how we talked about trying different ARP patterns? Let's do it. So I like that one. I think that one's quite good. So let's remember that. That's up and down. Very simple. But what would it sound like doing something like a staircase up and down? Let's check it out. Go back to bar nine. In fact, why don't we just loop this and try some things? So let's do that. We're going to turn on, right up here near the counter, we're going to turn on loop. And so let's not loop, let's loop at bar 9. So let me start this instead of at bar 1. 
We'll start it at nine and we'll just loop it for how about two bars? Da 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 da, -da two bars, and we'll try some different presets. So here is staircase. I'll turn it up a little bit. It's pretty good. actually pretty cool. I kind of love how it syncopates that. Now, I didn't even actually do this yet. I'm having fun here. This is great. Hope you guys are having fun. So it says the range here. We can also have it plus an octave. Now watch what happens when I do this. It'll, it'll actually provide that extra octave and we'll try it here on this spiral. Let's go back to bar nine. So what would that octave thing sound like on what I liked, which was just up and down? Let's check it out. You know, I mean, geez, you know, we have endless possibilities. And so maybe what I'll do is I could create different mixes. You know, hey, what do you guys think of this? We'll make a mix and, and I can make a bounce and give my files to my friends and say, what do you guys think? And they'll vote and tell me, hey, it's the first one. So it's very easy to be able to create or do a save as, let's say, or duplicate the track. You know, maybe I would come up here and say, well, I'll just save this. This is the first one. But anyway, it's fun to be able to try out different types of arpeggiated patterns and rhythms. In fact, we were trying 16th notes. Let's try 32nd notes. So it's twice as fast. Let's, let's see what it sounds like coming in at bar eight. It's gonna be pretty madness. Let's see. actually pretty cool and maybe we would do that like in other words since this is just two sections what if we took this piece and we copied it and we had a second section and we had a bridge section and we had a solo section and the last time we, we go into this it's the 32nd note it's coming you know it's bringing the piece to the end but anyway we don't have time for that today in fact we don't even have very much time at all I'm talking too much okay so what does that mean the last thing we want to add is some more percussion elements so because we have a drum kit but I think we can certainly add some more vibe to it so how are we going to do that? Let's rewind it back to the beginning. We're going to hit save. We're always saving. Be very good about that. Don't, don't lose anything. So in order for me to bring in what are called clips or loops, I need audio tracks for them to go onto. So let's do that. We're going to go up to project and I'm going to hold option or alt if you're on a PC and I'm going to add multiple stereo tracks. And it says, how many would you like? I'd like three. Here they are. One, two, three three and I'm going to name them option name them loop one I can just down arrow loop two down arrow loop three save okay so there's nothing on these tracks so let's add something we're going to go over this time to a new window that we haven't actually explored yet in performer light which is called clips by the way whenever you hover over any window, it will describe, it'll give you help balloons or tags to help you learn these different windows. So we're gonna go over to Clips window, and you can see, look at all my tracks, bass, piano, here's my virtual instruments. Well, I don't wanna see all this stuff, I only really wanna focus on the three audio tracks. There they are, and there's nothing happening here. So Clips is cool. Clips is where you can, you have different slots or empty clips where you can add different MIDI tracks or audio clips or loops and then you can trigger them individually or as a scene. So what we're gonna do now on the far right is we're gonna open up what's called the content browser. This is something you have inside Performer Lite and it lets you get to various shortcuts or windows that you wanna get things, uh, where you wanna to get to things like plugins, virtual instruments, or you can get to, in my case, I've added a place here. You can add a shortcut on your computer. I happen to have a folder full of different audio loops. So here's my loops, and what do I have here? Here's the ethno loops. These are basically cool like world instruments. So let's start with the Spanish guitar loop. These are audio files, but they're actually loops. Now what's cool is I don't have to worry about what the tempo is because they're gonna automatically line up to the tempo of your project. So that's really cool about Performer Light is you don't have to think about the tempo. 
So let's just drag them in. So I'm going to take the Spanish guitar loop and I'm going to drag it over to loop one. There it is. So once it comes in, I'm going to hit save. I'm going to double click on it. And it looks like I want to make sure that it's set to loop here at four bars. Save. Perfect. So now let's bring in something else here. Here's an urban Indian loop. Let's put this on this channel. Let it load. And let's double click on it. Let's just make sure that it's set to loop here for four bars. And then last but not least, we're going to add here something called it's an African drum. It's like drums and shakers. So let's bring that in here to the third. Now the reason why I'm putting them on separate tracks is that way I can trigger them individually, but they're not going to also trigger as scenes. But I can set that up. In fact, we will do that for the, these first two. We're going to put them on the same row. So let's double click on African drums here. Let's make sure that this is set to set to four bars. So, okay. So now I'm going to grab this Spanish guitar and I'm going to option drag it. So I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Indian urban. So now these guys are on the same line or the same scene. So when I hit play, they're going to drop down and they're going to start playing. You see, and down below, uh, this is what's called the cue grid, meaning that when I drop it down, it's going to start playing. And if I play something else in the same track, it's going to wait two bars, then it's going to drop in. So this is a really cool interactive window where you're able to play different loops, phrases that will lock to tempo, and then you can add a lot of cool rhythm to your track. So what does it sound like? Well, let's make sure that it's set up to trigger. Play on clip cue. So since this is the active window, at the far right corner, you have the ability to get to various menu options. So let's see what it sounds like with uh, these loops. That's cool. So I'll turn down the Indian loop a little bit. So I can see that the loop point is now kicking in. We can take off the loop. So when I played you the example for the first time, remember how the percussion started the piece of music? If you guys remember that far back, I had the music start kind of a little bit later, but the drums started initially. So how do we do that? We can easily move everything. Now watch how we do this. It's simple. If I just select all, I can just use the arrow keys and I can just start moving the music. So let's just give ourselves basically four bars. One, two, three, four bars of spa space, or emptiness at the beginning. Nothing's happening there. That's where I want to put the percussion. And then I'll let the percussion stay in. So let's see what that sounds like. Let me hit play. Four, two, two, three, four. Cool. So it's just like a percussion intro. So let's but now that they're playing, see if I go back over to the clips window, you can see that these guys are set to play. But how do I actually, you know, record that information in a way that I can start it and stop it when I want to, as opposed to having it just play all the time? How do I actually get it to start and stop when I want? Well, there's an easy way to do that. And what all it basically entails is, is basically recording these clips back into the timeline. Now it sounds a little advanced, but you'll get the hang of it and you'll get to just watch it go by the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off play on the clip cue. And I'm going to go back to the tracks. Let's see here. We've got these playing here. That's okay. We're, we're going to clear these out. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm also going to put the African loop on here. So they're all playing. And even though I don't want them all playing at the same time, I'll show you how easy it is to change that in the main sequence window. Okay, so what are we going to do? I'm going to hold Option or Alt on a PC. When I hold Option, it puts the record button in this new thing called Clips Record. You see how it has a different look to it? That means it's going to record these clips that get to play. It's going to record them into the timeline here in this main window. Now watch it go down. We'll go back to Clips. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit Record. I'll go ahead and give myself the metronome so I can and let's see, we've got it set to two measures. I'll make it one measure so that it quickly drops. So here we go. Two, three, four. So 
that's enough because we can easily extend it. So what we did is watch what happened now. I played these different clips so we can actually pull these out. And so now we go back to the main view. Look what we did. We have this as audio in here now. So we can start it. In fact, why don't we start the guitar body at bar one and we'll start this Indian loop at bar three. And then, of course, this Indian drum thing's only going to happen here at the what I call the bridge. So now let's remember we talked about the loop tool. We're going to loop these out all the way to the end. We're going to loop these out all the way to the end. And so now what's cool is that we have it, it starts. Let's go back here all the way to the beginning. It starts with the guitar loop, goes to the Indian loop, and then, of course, at the bridge, this African loop comes in. And so now, let's just check it out for a quick bar. Before we make our mix, let's just listen to it. Three, four. Sounds fine. Okay, so now we could go back to the mixing board. In fact, let's do this real quick. So you can see I've got um, all of my tracks. I've got my virtual instruments, my MIDI tracks. I've got my audio bass track with different effects, the tuners. Here's my audio loops. Now, if I wanted to put, let's say, a mastering effect on the master, let's say you want to have an overall limiter or EQ. Now, remember, we talked about having slots for effects. We also have presets. So I've created one here called ML Master. That just means that everything that's audio is going to be coming through this last channel so it's like having effects on everything in the project. So it's going to hit an EQ, and it looks like the EQ is just adding a little air on the top, a little bit of brightness. And then it's going to hit a compressor, which will basically kind of make it sound a little punchier. Okay. And then, of course, the last thing it hits is a limiter. And the limiter will basically make sure that it's nice and loud, but it's not clipping or distorted. So we've got our mastering effects on there. So now if I want to make my mix, all I have to do is simply select all, and if I go up to file, bounce to disk. Bounce to disk is going to let me name, here's my webinar mix, and we're just going to add it to the sequence, and it's going to be a broadcast WAV file. Now, I could also make it an MP3, but for now, we'll just leave it a high-quality WAV file. And you can see that's where my mix is going out. I'm good to go. I hit OK. Now watch how it does this faster than real time. It'll do my bounce. So it's basically taking all the tracks, going through all the effects, going through that master fader, and creating a final output, a final mix. And there it is. There's the final mix. So now, of course, I could just export it. We could listen to it, we could edit the mix, or we could just say, you know what, now I'm going to export that, and I'm going to put it on my desktop, but I would like it to be an MP3 so I can just send it to my buddy in an email or I'm going to text it to my friend. So I'm just going to set that up and we're going to we'll save it to the, to the desktop as an MP3 and that's fine. 256 is good quality. So here it goes. It's going to export the file. And once we're done, all we have to do is hide the program. And of course, there it is. Let's listen to it. Oh, so we're in good shape. So that's a quick tour of Performer Lite. If you go to Motu's website, uh, there's you know links for additional materials. You know we also of course have tech support at Motu if you have questions about Performer Lite or your hardware. Um, the requirements of course are running you know a Windows 10 system. You know and this is a 64-bit program on the Mac. You can run all the way back to I think it's 10.11.6 is the minimum OS, and it will work on Catalina, the new 10.15 operating system. The more the merrier when it comes to having RAM and, of course, a fast computer. But it's not a demanding program at all. You can, in fact, uh, it's not even really causing any issues at all with my computer. I could push it much, much harder. So it's, a, it's an efficient tool. And please reach out to us if you have any questions about, you know, Motu or, or your interfaces. Uh, remember that Performer Lite is compatible with Digital Performer. And we also do webinars for Digital Performer on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So if you want to learn more about that, you can go to Motu's webinars page on our website. And thank you very much for joining us today. Take care. Thank you.